this is the second class on the Maimed of Elish Mace, which is a Maimed about Golas. And um, I explained to you last week that this Maimed explains Golas a little bit differently than the way Golas is explained in other Maimodim. In this Maimed, the concept of Golas is that the Elokus comes down from a higher level to a lower level. In other words, Golas doesn't mean that it goes away, it departs, Kuchabrichu Salik. But rather that the Golos means that the godliness becomes more entangled, more involved. But on every level and in all levels, the Golos comes down. The Elokus comes down, pardon me. And of course, this is somehow going to get us back to the Ve'elish Meiz Menei Salaboy Mitzrayma, why it's written twice, and all the questions that we touched on in last week's class. One of the models, one of the illustrations of this idea that the understanding of Golas that this particular Maimir gives us, that the Lakus is not departing in Golas, but rather it's descending into the Golas, so it's always available, but it's more entangled, is the topic of Torah. And the next class or two will be addressing, pardon me, various levels of Torah. How these various levels of Torah represent godliness it's a, from, when it's on a higher level and when it's on a lower level and when it's on a lower level still, and so forth and so on. The, the class begins, we're on line 39. One of the details which is important for us to understand is the concept of Libun Hilchase, which is the spiritual parallel of Levenim to clarify, to whiten halacha. How Libun Hilchase sets the stage for the Gili of Mashiach. And in order to explain Libun Hilchase, the Rebbe, the Alter Rebbe goes off into a lengthy discussion about Dinyin HaToyra. I guess I'll, I'll put it to you in, in these words. There, there's a rule in Hasidus, which is, if, if you think about it from a philosophical perspective, an imperative, a very basic rule, a very necessary rule, that the Eibishter's relationship with the world is through kavim, through channels, through pipes. Sometimes they use the word sinoides, which literally means pipes. That's how we translate the words kime'elam kivinu loch. And other instances where the word kivui is used, kave of course means to hope, but it's interpreted from the word kav, that the chayes aliki, that the divine light, life and energy, descends from a higher level to a lower level through a channel, through a passage, through a kav, or through a vessel. The reason this is important is because having everything is almost as good as having nothing, unless it's available to you, unless it reaches you in a usable fashion. It's like the person who takes medicines and his body just gives it out the way he took it in. He can take medicines all day long and he remains sick. Oh, God forbid a person doesn't properly digest his food He can eat and eat and eat and eat and he's dying from starvation, from hunger, because his body is not metabolizing the food. You have to process it. You have to absorb it. And in order for this to occur, it has to descend from a higher level to a lower level in an accessible way, in an absorbable fashion. So everything happens through kavim, through channels, through pipes, through mechanisms, through mediums, which brings it from a higher level to a lower level in a constructive way. The antithesis of this, the alternative to this, the opposite of this notion of Tzinedus and Kavim is what's called in Hasidus, Chitzenius HaMakif, Kachashech HaKo'ira, at the level of Ein Seif. On the level of Chitzenius is an infinity that is giving no one and is available to everyone. Chitzenius HaMakif is Ein Seif, and therefore if you can access it, it can give you Chayis, Ona She'en Ona Breg, it can be Nimshlach HaMokam She'en Eroi, but it's not constructive chayes, it's not pnimiyas chayes, it can't be revealed as godly because it has no 
trajectory, it has no direction, it has no purpose, it has no depth, it's just energy. And on the other hand, it's available to nobody because it's infinity. For something to be useful on this earth has to come through a kav, through a tzinit, through a passage, through a medium which brings it to us in a constructive way. And Beklolos, there are two of those, right? There is the chitainius elemas and the pnimius elemas. There's the external world and the internal world. The external world is the world of the Asar Mamores, the ten utterances of creation with which the Abishta created the world, which are a series of uh, steps or levels or spheres, if you will, that bring the light, life, and energy of creation from heaven to earth to produce the worlds in an organized and in an orderly fashion, but the Asar Mamores, the ten utterances of creation, who's called Chochmah Tato and Chochmah of Maise and so forth, don't reveal very much. They conceal. Their purpose is to create worlds, and in the creation of worlds, the whole definition of Olam is Milosh and Helam, that the worlds hide God in it, so the worlds can self-identify and so forth. But then there's another Kav, another channel, which is the Pnimius Olam, and this is Tere Mitzvah, which are the purpose of creation, of course. And the purpose of creation is not that the world should exist in a way which hides godliness, but to the contrary, in the world which the Abishta created, that in and of themselves, that by themselves, conceal over godliness, through avoida, through toira, through mitzvahs, through birudim, through tshuva, through nesyenis, through kabbalah sel, through mesiras nefesh, through dira betachtoinim, you bring heaven down to earth, you reveal godliness below. And of course, Hasidah says, this also has a series of steps, it's also through a certain channel, of Pneumius Salem is that the godliness should descend from heaven to earth in an orderly fashion in revealing godliness as opposed to in concealing godliness, which is basically the concept of Torah. Our Maimon is going to explore Torah. So let me uh, preface first. Let me give you an introduction first. There are, there's only one Torah. There's only one Torah. At the same time, there's many teiras. Like it's brought in the chesidus and the kisvi harizal, the al teiras chaz, the teiras atzilos, shleimad the tanos, the teiras abriyah. There's one teira, but it exists in every world. In other words, there's there's a channel that reveals godliness from heaven to earth, which is the pnimius elemes, and this channel which reveals godliness from pnimius uh, from heaven to earth, which is pnimius elemes, has a variety of different steps and a variety of different stages. So let's begin with this. This is an idea that we've explored many, many times in the past. I'm going to say this now as a stage setter, if you will. The highest madrega of Torah is the Luchas, Luchas Abris, the Tablets of the Covenant, where the way it's explained in Hasidus is called Eisies HaChakika, the letters are carved, the stone and the Os are one and the same thing. And of course the nimshal is that the godliness of the Torah and the words of the Torah, the revelation of the Torah is one and the same. The idea is that the Torah is one and the same. That's why we learn in Hasidus that the luchas abris are kulei ponim. They have only a front. All six directions was the front because their godliness on a level which becomes one with the thing that they're manifest on, with the physical thing on which they're manifest, and as a result, they reveal godliness, and godliness is frontal. Godliness is called ponim, so there's no back, no achirai. Specifically, there's two levels, there's chakika me'evet aleved, there's chakika which is not me'evet aleved, but that's already uh, too detailed. The second level is the sefer teda, this is the scripture, sefer teda. The sefer teda is oisius, they're added to parchment, and now part and parcel with the parchment, they're added to the parchment. So it's called ACS Aksav, written letters, as opposed to ACS um, Hachakika, carved letters. And when it comes to a Sefer Teda, we say that it has a ponim and achiraim, a front and a back, a face and a rear. And I'll get back to this soon. And of course, the third level of Teda is Teda Shmapet, the oral Teda, which is called Kule Achir. It's entirely achiraim, it's all back, it's all rear, and there is no face at all. And years ago, I told you the story about Arichis, which is in the Sicha of Kala Yesla Mechamez Beis David, the classic Sicha, where the Rebbe tells the story about Shivim Ponim Lateda and Shivim Achelayim Lateda. I'm not going to repeat that story now, Bariches. What does this all mean? The 
the world comes from Hashem. Hashem is ain't safe, is infinite. The inspiration that the Abishter has for creating a world cannot be called logical. You cannot say this is the reason the Abishter created the world, for a simple reason that Hashem isn't logic. Hashem is ain't safe. The only term which can be used to denote the inspiration that Hashem uses to create the world is a world which reflects the Ein Seifius of HaKadosh Baruch. And that word basically is the word Tainug. Or in the language of this Maimed, Neyam Havaya, Divine Delight, Pleasure. The Marshal in Hasidus that is meant to help illustrate the concept of Ein Seif is Tainug. In other words, the Torah, the, the, the inspiration of the Eibishter is a reflection of the Eibishter. The Eibishter is Ein Seif, so when he's motivated to do something, the motivation itself is the motivation of Ein Seif. And that Ein Seif motivation is referred to in order for us to be able to comprehend a little bit what it is, it's called Tainuk. What is Tainuk? How do you explain Tainuk? So in very short, very, very briefly, very, very short, every creation, if it's a true creation, we need to say it's a reflection of its creator and it's connected to its creator, has inside of himself infinity. Or in other words, he has inside of himself a piece of HaKadosh Baruch. That infinity and that piece of HaKadosh Baruch Hu is hidden, is unavailable to him. But it's the real source of motivation in his life. In other words, people do things for all kinds of reasons. And people are driven to do things under all kinds of circumstances. But for most people, most of the time, their motivation is what they understand, what they feel, what they want, and things of this sort. The real essence of the person, the infinity of the person, the godly point within the person, which is called Ke'echatainug, is not overtly, is not obviously, is not on the surface the driving force behind the way a person lives his life. You don't see that. Hasidus argues that even when you don't see it, it's still true. You ask a person, why did you build a house on a hill? It gives you a logical reason. But that logical reason is really a mask for something much, much deeper, the tainug of the person. But you don't see the tainug, and he certainly doesn't offer you the tainug. He explains you a logical explanation. Why not? Because if you come to a person and say to him, why did you build your house on this hill? And you, his answer is, because this gives me pleasure. You call him crazy. I ask you a logical question, you answer me mushy-feely, emotional, spiritual. So we interact, we relate to one another on a lower level, on a revealed level, on a koyches level, on an intellectual level, as opposed to on a giluyim level, on a tainug level. But in reality, the real motivation of everything that a person does comes from the very deepest levels. They're ain safe, they're tainug. When do you see, when do you see that ain't safe? Hasidah says you see that ain't safe when a person finishes something. When a person does a project. Now, if you would ask them why they did that project, they'd give you all kinds of logical reasons. But Hasidah is going to argue that that's really an excuse. It's a layer. The logical explanation is why he's doing things without the real issue, which really because this comes from his neshama. But he can't say so because he doesn't want to be called crazy. So he explains it logically. But when he's finished, he experiences an incredible amount of pleasure. What is the feeling of pleasure? The feeling of pleasure is as follows. Basically, we live in a world of need. This world is the world of chesed. We need everything. And we need everything replenished and renewed all the time. The nature of a physical world, the nature of physical creation is chesed. We're missing food, we're missing drink, we're missing air, we're missing clothing, we're missing ideas, we're missing everything. And whatever we have is here now, and in a minute now we need it again, because it's not forever. So the nature of our existence is always needing the neshama, which is connected to the Ein Seif, which is connected to HaKadosh Baruch Hu, has no chasrinus, has no lacks. In Lashon HaChasidus, Ein Keach, Chasr Peyel Lamayla. On high, there's no such thing as chasrin. Every possibility is actual. And actual in the kind of way that it's forever. So when you have an, an undertaking, a project, say you're building a business, 
and you built it successfully after many months or many years of effort and it's achieved a certain plateau, a certain level of security, a certain level of profitability. And you stop and you examine your business, you experience an incredible feeling of euphoria, of pleasure, of delight. What Hasidus is saying is that since you completed something, you go up into your neshama, or what your neshama is comes down. And you experience what your neshama is. In other words, the experience of pleasure, which of course can be motivated by very external things, it can also be motivated by very deep and internal things, all different types of pleasure. The experience of pleasure basically is experiencing the pneumius of the neshama where there is no lack. Experiencing the level of the neshama which has everything. In the world in which we live, we constantly need. When you do something and you achieve something and you experience the pleasure from it, you're going back to the source that was the real original motivator for the project that you did and you're experiencing the richness of the neshama. That's what tainug is. You're experiencing your neshama and the experience of the neshama or the nefesh can be motivated by all kinds of things. And the experience of pleasure is feeling a euphoric. You feel a sense of incredible power Incredible satisfaction, incredible security, incredible fearlessness because you're raised up to a place where there's no chastrenus. Of course, it's not real because you come back from there and you're the same person you were before. In Kedusha, it's a little bit different. But that's basically the understanding of Tainuk. So when Hasidus wants to give a mushal for ain't safe, by the Abish, they use the mushal of Tainuk. The level in a locus where everything is without lack. The Abish that gave us a Torah. And the Torah has a key component. What is the key component of the Torah? The key component of Torah is that it has to come from heaven to earth. It has to reach us. If the Torah does not reach us, then the Torah has not served the purpose. The Torah has to be a gilis, to be a, a tzinir, a kav, a channel of hashpah from heaven to earth. For the tater, When the Torah reaches us, the Abish has achieved his aim. And like I said before, the Torah is different than the worlds. The worlds have a channel which is supposed to hide the Abishtad, the Kvayachal, the Abishtad, the Teda has a channel which is ultimately supposed to reveal the Abishtad, but there has to be a channel and a channel which reaches us. So it says in Hasidah that this channel consists of three basic steps. The Teda on the level of Ein Seif, which is called the Luchas. The Teda on the level of Atzilas, which is called Teda Shev the Chumish, the Mikra, the Nevua. And the Teda Sheb Peh, which is Teda on the level of the lower worlds. And like I said before, the Teda higher than Atzilus is called Kulei Ponim. It's entirely frontal. There's only a face. There is no rear. The Teda in B'riye Tzir Nasiyah, the Teda Shabal Peh, is Kulei Acher. has no front. It's only a rear. And the Teda of Atzilus has both a Ponim and a Acher, front and a back. What is this? The Ponim of Teda is the Ein Seif. The Ponim of Teda is the Tainug of the Teda. In other words, if you could relate to Pnimius HaTeda, you could experience on a level which is higher than logic the motivation of the Teda itself. Meaning to say you would know the reasons for the Teda, but it wouldn't be a logical reason. It would be an Atzmiyazdika reason. It would be a Tainug reason. What Tvayachal, the Ein Tzav of Alakus, is inspired by to give us this mitzvah in this way and that way and so forth and so The Chitzani is the the Achirayim, the back of the Teda, is Seichel, it's Chacham bin Adas, is Limut, is understanding. And of course, we have a mitzvah to learn and understand the Teda. And they're ultimately two very separate things. The Abishta gave us a mitzvah to learn and understand the Teda. And the Abishta gave us a, a mitzvah, the Abishta gave us a Teda to experience Ein Seif, a Lakus. But the logical understanding of the Teda brings you in touch with the understanding of the Teda. The understanding of the Teda is a manifestation, it's a symptom, it's a result of the Taimei Teda, of the Tainug, of the Ein Seif in the Teda. But there's a question of linkage. Is there a connection between the Pnimiyas HaTeda, the Tainug of the Teda, and the Chitzenius HaTeda, the Seichel of the Teda? And this is where the differences lie. In, in a Sefer Teda, there's a Ponem and Ocher. A Sefer Teda is called Mikra. Teda Shebeksav is called Mikra. So it says, Nalt Rebbe in Tanya Perek at the end. That's called Adam HaKedei LaChavedei, or Adam HaKedei LeBnei. That Teda Shebeksav is called Shmeis of Shalak Kaddish Baruch The whole Sefer Teda is the names of HaKadosh Baruch Hu. And every word of Mikra, you're calling Hashem. 
Shmaisav Shal HaKadosh Baruch Hu is ain't safe, is, is, is Elokus. Or in the language of our Maimer, Ve'ela Shmais, B'nei Yisrael, you'll see this later, the names of Hashem are ain't safe. So when a person reads the Sefer Teda, every word is ain't safe. But the Sefer Teda also has a translation and an interpretation. And this is called the Chochmah Satera, the Cherayim of Teda. And of course, there's a special idea to try and understand the Teda intellectually. And sometimes you want to separate the godly inspiration of the Ponim of the Teda in order to be able to understand the Cherayim of Teda and the level of intellect. I told you this story by Riches once before also, how the Rebbe Rashab asked a chassid, Pshat and a Maimir. And the chassid didn't want to answer him because he said the Rebbe Rashab knows Pshat himself. So the Rebbe Rashab said, I do know Pshat, but I wasn't sure if I understand it or if I see it. If it's Seichel or if it's Ruch HaKedosh. When you ask a chassid who doesn't have Ruch HaKedosh, who doesn't have a connection to Ponim, to Pnimi Ezatere, if he understands it, then I will be able to know by his understanding whether I'm understanding it or I'm seeing it. Like the Lashem from Rabbi Isaac Homler, that the Tzemach Tzedek didn't always have Ruach HaKedesh. And then he added, I'm always best to nish tov Ruach HaKedesh. Sometimes it's preferred not to have Ruach HaKedesh. You can use your seichel in understanding Chachmat Seishon Baruch Hu. So the Sefer Teda has a face and a back. The face of the Teda is the Tainuk Delkus of Teda. The back of Teda is the understanding of Teda. The Lucha Sabis is Kule Ponim, that only Elokus, only Ein Tzav. And Teda Shabbat is only Chachmat Seichel, it's only intellect. Which, of course, explains why when it comes to learning Teda Shabbat Peh, we're so concerned that it shouldn't become some of us. When you learn Torah, you're afraid that it should become a portion of death. Because when you're learning the Eibish test Teda, but all you have is intellect. And the Ruach HaKedesh, the Yalakus, you don't know it all. The possibility of being Makala upon him by Teda Shalei Kaloch, the possibility of Ishtamish uh, Betaga, using the Teda to serve you. I'm such a smart guy, I know so much Teda. It's very real to become a, to think you're a balabayas of a is very serious. That's why you have the concept of Baruch Abatera Tchila, all kinds of things that you do to remember that even if I'm learning Teda only on level of Seichel, behind the Seichel is the Ein Sof, is the Eibishter, whether I know it or not, and therefore has to be, but that's the Eim, be rest of the have to learn it the way I'm supposed to, and shouldn't go to a place which it's not supposed to go. And the Sefer Teda is in the middle. Sefer Teda has a Ponim and Anach. The ponim of the Teda is the Elokus, and the Cheraim of the Teda is the Avon of Asag, is understanding the Teda. So what the Maimah wants us to understand is that the Teda is a channel that brings godliness from heaven to earth. On the highest level of this channel, Teda is only godliness. On the lowest level of this channel, Teda is only intellect, but that's only the way it appears. The MS hidden inside is Elokus. And at the middle level of this channel, there is a combination of a pnimius and a chitonius. The, there's the alakus of the teira, and there's a sechel of the teira. They join together in elamat silos. And teira is bringing, is delivering it from higher worlds to lower, from heaven to earth, until it comes to the lowest levels in seder ishtalshlos. So, um, we're ready to start to learn. It's time for us to get to the text and to learn inside. And... Um, Appreciate how this entire setup of Torah is a is a medium, is an is an is a mechanism of helping us be able to understand the idea that godliness comes from a higher level to a lower level in Golos. We're beginning this conversation by understanding how godliness comes from a higher level to a lower level as it is in Torah. So let's begin. It says the Rebbe on line forty-two. Yes, lahagdim. I want to preface first, Pirush Ve'inyin, the interpretation. And the idea of this passage from Sidr. The Eibish, there is a melech, he's a king, that's Meshu B'chom that's praised and beautified, Adeyad, Ad Infinitum, forever. Shmoy HaGodl is his great name. That the great name of HaKadosh Baruch Hu is Meshu B'chom Adeyad. Now what's the meaning of this Pasuk? That there is infinite numbers of levels. Adeyad means till without any end. And in all of these levels, Shmai HaGodl. Shmai HaGodl means the name of the Eibishter. The name of the Eibishter, you'll see later, means Ein Seif in Meshubach HaMafeh. In other words, as many levels as there are, godliness exists in each one of those levels, from the highest levels to the lowest levels. And he continues on line 43, The real reason why an Hashem descends into this world is to descend or to go back up. But not to go back to the same place from which it came, but to go higher. 
Today, what is the advantage the Nishama hopes to achieve by descending into this world? Which it did not have, to see, to stare, to look at the delight of Ein Seif. And Noyam Avaya doesn't mean Hasogas Alakus, it means Taina Galaki, the delight of Alakus, which is the Ein Seif. Shahu, which is basically is Hasogas and Shomis, what the Shomis reach as they sit in Gan Eden. That not only do they have a Hasogas and Alakus, but Nen and Miziva Shechina, they have the Tainuk, the delight from that Hasogas. What they understand intellectually is limited. It's called Acherayim, it's called Seichel. The pleasure they have from this understanding is called ponim, it's called pnimis, this is the Nina Tainuk. And I saw once in a Maimir that he says, this is the difference in the Shoma before it comes out into this world and after it leaves. When the Shoma before it comes out into this world the first time understands Yetlechkeit, Moidendik. It's even possible that the Neshama before it comes out into this world is on a higher level than the level the Neshama will return to after it leaves this world. In some place it says, Ayin Bos is Ganeidin Ha'elyin. Lo'onat Ta'elech is Ganeidin Ha'tachten. Which means that a Neshama starts off higher. And when it goes back up, it goes back lower. And nevertheless, it's considered Yerid Etzeir Ha'aliyah because what the Neshama had before it came into this world was only Hasaga, understanding godliness. And what the Neshama has after it returns, it's called Taimei Teira, the Tainug Hasaga, experiencing the pleasure, the ain't safe from understanding of godliness, which is the name of ain't safe, that's called here, Nen in Miziv Ashkin. Delighting, being pleasured by the rays of the Shekhinah, which is not only a question of understanding, but experiencing the Ein Seif, Shu Tainug, it is a delight. And as I explained to you what delight means before, it's the experience of richness, of having everything, of being secure, of lacking nothing, because you're connected to the Abish to Nifa, which is wondrous. It's impossible to describe how delightful, how pleasuresome the experience of godless in the Shama has in Ganeidin after it returns from its sojourn, from its experience on earth. Continues the Rebbe on line 47, and he says, In the holy books, they reference only two Ganadins, a higher level and a lower Ganadin. There's so many different levels of Ganadin, and accordingly, each Ganadin is a different world of delight. Add in Kates, add infinitum, for no limit. There's an infinite number of Ganadin. That the number of praise, the number of levels of gili of tiny galaki, in say the restalshos is infinite. Adei ad beyond any end. Ukmaim, the Lord the Gemara says, Sadikim ain't lemenuch. Sadikim have no rest. Be'elam le'be'elam as e'be'elam haboshenema. Yelchum mechayel el choyel. They go from strength to strength. Adei shirah lekim betzian. They're never finishing to grow because as high as a neshama goes, he can go high. V'nei yamavaye v'atayne gahu. Page line fifteen. This delight is Mabachinus Gili Mishmeha God Lachol. It all begins with the Abishta's great name. It begins with Ain Seif. Tainug is experiencing Ain Seif. Ain Seif is not Seichel. Ain Seif is not intellect. Ain Seif is everything. Ain Seif is the Abishta. Or at least the Abishta's light. And experiencing the light of the Abishta happens through learning the Torah and understanding, which is limited, and then experiencing the pleasure from that understanding, which is considered infinite. And in that pleasure, there's ain't safe, and there's ain't safe levels of ain't safe, and the foundation of it all is the essence of it all is the beginning of it all is Shmiyah God. And as the Gemara said, that Shekidai call you sweet again, and it's worthwhile to go through all the sufferings of Gehenim. To see, to experience the delight of Havaya. It's worthwhile being judged and going to Gehenim even for many years. The lace of the Ahmad to experience Elam Hab. And this is the purpose. Yeah? The purpose is to reveal godliness and to experience the delight of godliness. How does it reach us? So the Rebbe now starts from the bottom. Yeah? We start out far away from the Abishta and we want to get close. And the ultimate purpose is to experience the pleasure. They have to look at it from two angles. From our angle, we're far away from this pleasure. We want to get ple- close to the pleasure. From the pleasure's angle, from the Ein Sof angle, it's far away from us. And it gets close, we want to get closer to us, which is the Teda trajectory from a higher level to a lower level. But let's start with us. Avraham Bochale, Avraham was given a choice when he was told that he was the patriarch, the father of the nation of God. And they would have to go through all kinds of things to refine them and cleanse them and prepare them to become his nation. 
And if Ram was given a choice, whether he wants Golas or Gehenim, Bochal is she but Golas. He preferred that Yiddin should go into Mitzrayim and be enslaved in Golas, Tachas is to Gehenim, rather than go to Gehenim and experience the pain of Gehenim. Now, I don't know the whole Ariches, at least not at this moment, of why Avram chose one over the other. But the difference between Gehenim and Golas is this. In Gehenim, the pain is very, very acute, very real, very crisp. It's incredibly painful. And one of the most basic aspects of the experience of Gehenim is that you don't know why it's happening. If a person is being cleansed, and he knows the point and the purpose of cleansing, how it's going to benefit later, he'll be clean. While it's being cleansed, it's even possible that the cleansing should actually give him pleasure. But it certainly has a context. When a person is being cleansed and has no idea of the point, has no concept of the purpose, to him it's just torture. That's called Gehenim. It's very acute, very painful, and it's very extreme, and it doesn't serve a purpose. Golos is the extreme opposite of that. Golos is not defined necessarily by acute pain. It's defined by numbness. By Eiseseinu Leira Inu, when in Antoni it doesn't seem to serve a purpose. Golos lasts much longer than Gehenim, and the pain is far less acute. Avraham chose the drawn-out form of refinement of Golos over the very concentrated form of refinement of Gehenim. Now, I don't think the reason is because Gehenim is more painful and Golos is less painful. I think the reason is because Gehenim, you don't have no free will. And Golos, you have free will. Now, Altav Ramavinu chose Golos over Gehenim because he wanted Yidin to earn their cleansing rather than give it, be given it as a gift from HaKadosh Baruch. Kihine, in Yana Gehenim, who what's achieved in Gehenim? Kedei letzare, if a nefesh, to correct, to heal the nefesh. Mechela, asara, shebekirba, from all evil illnesses which are in her. Kimei metzare, if like Ketha, just like one refined silver. That when you have silver, which is mixed with other alloy, with other metals, with other junk. So, you put them into a melting pot. And in this core, this melting pot for silver, the residue and the waste is separated out. The silver remains pure, with no sig, with no trace of uh, undesirable elements. The same is true. For us to be able to receive the delight of Elokus which is coming to us from heaven to earth, and we are trying to approach it from earth to heaven. has to go through a fire of Gehenim, which refines it. To separate evil from good, to be able to experience godliness. In Atzilus there can be no evil. And if a person wants to experience godliness on the level of Ain safe and level of Atzilus, he has to be purged. That's what Gehenim is. And the same is true of Golos. Avram Avram chose Golos because Golos is Gamkin Bechina of Lenefesh. It also is a, a healer, a corrector, a binder for the Neshama, like the Pasuk describes as Kor Abazel Mimisraim. And the Rebbe concludes by saying Golos Edom is also called Kor, but not Kor Abazel, Kor Eni. Not a melting pot for silver, but a melting pot of poverty. So what's the Rebbe saying? We want to approach a Lukus. We want to reach ain't safe. We want to reach Neyam Avaya. And part of that process is this refinement. So we start from the bottom and we go to the top. And if we yochal the Eibish, it starts from the top and goes to the bottom. Ach, however, he neyam neshami nivro bal gvul. The neshami is limited and, has a, and is a creation and is limited. V'yev shalin nefesh ha'kabal aras tanyo ge'elyin and as a consequence, even if we do refine ourselves, and even if we do open ourselves up to understand godliness, it's limited. And therefore, v'yev shalin nefesh ha'kabal, it's impossible for a limited soul to receive aras tanyo ge'elyin, a ray of the supernal delight, shu bli gavul adayad, it's infinite. Hello. So the question now becomes, if we as finite, complex creations cannot relate to the Ain Safe, how are we supposed to relate to the Ain Safe in the first place? What's the idea? What's the path? What does it help to go through Gehenim or Golos if you can't reach it? And the answer is, I day slap which creates a channel, which creates a medium, and this creates, it creates a garment to deliver it to us. Which because of us, the Pasuk says, Eight to Eir Kasalmo, Debish directs light like a blanket. And what is this blanket? Which is the light of the Teir. Which, of course, as the Pasuk describes, if it is like gun to the river flowing from Aden, which is the source of ain't saved, the source of all pleasures, which is the Hashkesh that irritates, ir- irrigates the garden. 
So before you get to the aspect of irrigation, let's just talk about the etzeminyin. We, from our end, are going through a cleansing to be able to approach the tater. And Kvayochal, the tater from the Abish's hand, is going through a descent to be able to reach us by coming down into the garment of light and in all kinds of other forms to come closer to us. The river flows from Aden to give water to the garden. Aden is the source of pleasures. And Gan Aden is the order of that pleasure. And through the Torah, we can have a relationship with the Titan. In other words, by understanding the Torah and experiencing the Ain'tself of the Torah, we could experience Ain Saif. And he says, The river flows from the source of pleasure, which is Aden, to irritate, to irrigate the garden, which is the garden. Which is the garden. That I say goes on the Torah. Where does the Ein Seif rest in Chochmah? Since Tere is Chochmah, and in Chochmah there is a manifestation of Ein Seif, therefore through the Tere, Tuchal HaSoger becomes the medium through which an Neshama is able to be Lahasik Shmei HaGadol to reach an understanding or an appreciation for Ein Seif. Because the entire Teira is names of HaKadosh Baruch So there's the Mokar of Tainuk, which is called Aden, or Noyam Havaya. And this comes down to irrigate, to water the Gan Prakam, the Gan Svarim, the 23 Svarim um, of the Chumash, which is a lower Madreg, which is a Ha'ara of Tainuk. And the Rebbe says, you should know that in this Torah, which is broken up in the Gan Storm, the Raisa, there is Tainuk be Slapchus and Chochmah, because the Raisa be Chochmah In other words, there's a Torah which is higher than Atzilus. As I described to you in my introduction, the Torah which is higher than Atzilus is pure Ein Seif, like the Luchas. And the Torah in Atzilus has a Ponim and Acherayim. The Ponim is a Lukus, the Acherayim is Seichel. And the Torah comes down from the level of Ein Seif. La Hashkes has gone the Gan Sidi de Raise, as it comes down into the Torah. Because Chochma, which is the beginning of Atzilus, is a cleaver for Ein Seif, and through Chochma, Ein Seif comes into Atzilus. So in Atzilus, there is a Torah which is inspired with godly light. Higher than Atzilus, there's only godly light. In Atzilus, there is a Ponim and Achir. But the Ponim and the Achir are linked. And when you're understanding the Torah, you connect it to the Ein Seif, which is in the Pneumius of Torah. Okay? This is Tate of Sa'at Silas. Now, although it doesn't say here, and although I didn't make a Kayseras, I didn't make a, a title, a Kepel, well, we just read those few lines are describing Tate of Sa'at Because Tate of Sa'at has a Ponim and Achaz Ein Seif. What does it say in line 70? Shishim Him and this is Mishnah. Okay? Turn to line 120. Shmein and Pilakshim is Braisa. Alom Eseim Mispur is Gemara. These three levels are three levels lower than the Torah we just read. The Torah we just read is also two levels. Why? It starts out as Noyam Avaya. And I'm telling you, and of course you're believing me because you don't have a choice, Nebuch, that Noyam Avaya is Aldera de Luchas. Eisei Sechakika, the Torah and the in are one and the same. And the Noyam Avaya is the source of every idea in Torah, but on a level which is on a level of Tainuk, higher than understanding. Noyam Havaya is Mislabish and Chochmah. And from Chochmah, it gives Chayas to the Gan Sidi, the Raisa, which goes on the Teir in Atzilus. And the Teir in Atzilus has two parts. And one of those two parts is the Elokus, is the Ponim. Another one of those two parts is the, uh, the Seichel, is the Achirayim. But in Atzilus, when you're learning Teir, understanding on a level of Seichel, you're connected to the Yain Seif of the Teir, to the Tainuk of the Teir. What about Mishnayis, which begins on line 70? What about Brises, which begins on line 121? What about Talmud, which begins on 134? This you're going to have to see next week. So what am I going to do now? We're going to fast forward to, um, to line 149. Now the Abish has to forgive me for doing this, because this is a very big chutzpah. This is not the way a Maimon is supposed to be learned. The mime is supposed to be learned in the order in which it was written from beginning to end. But I'm a bad boy, 
and it's not, it's not the first time, and it's not going to be the last time. So just to clarify, we started today around line 40, and we read until line 69, which means we learned about the idea that Torah comes through many levels. I'm skipping the lower levels, which are Mishnah, Brayse, and Talmud, and I'm going to the end of this conversation where the Alter Rebbe continues to describe the Torah of Atzilus. In other words, why the Alter Rebbe does this? He starts off from the highest levels, Taimei Torah, and then Torah and Atzilus, and goes on to Mishnah, Brayse, and Gemara, and then goes back to Torah, so Atzilus, I don't know. But this is how we're going to learn it. So we're going to continue now on line 149, where it says, Laskona that's the Kesenes. And with everything we understand, we said earlier, including the idea that in Atzilos there is a Pneumius and a Chetanius. The Pneumius of Atzilos is godly light, is ain't safe. The Chetanius of Atzilos is Chochmah Vaseichel, that you can understand in Caleb. And in Atzilos, the Pneumius Atzilos and the Chetanius Atzilos come together, the two things that join. Higher than Atzilos, they're one. Lower than Atzilos, there's only Seichel. In Atzilos, there's both, and they join together. Yuva Mashakosubazeh. This explains a very familiar Zayah that says the whole la teru mitzvah, the whole Indian of Teru Mitzvah is La Skona Raza Dashmei, is to bring a tikkun to the secret of the Abish's name. These three words, La Skona Raza Dashmei, is basically the same thing as saying that it's for the sake of the world of Atzilus. Because Atzilus is about La Skona Raza Dashmei, or as you know it from Sidir and from other sources, we call it La Shem Yechel Kotchabri Choshchent. What are the tactics on the Raza Dishmei? There's Chitzen Yisav Atzilus, there's Kalim of Atzilus, which is limited, and perhaps it's the infant of a saga understanding, and you want to correct them to bring the Pnim of Atzilus, which is the Ein Saf of Atzilus, into it. Hashem has seven names that can't be erased for Hashem Kalim, because it will hold the seven names of the Sphiris of Atzilus. But of course, the names of the Abish are not the Sphiris themselves, they're the Lukus of the Sphiris. Kikadei Shiem Shachas Erin Sei Baruch. There's an idea of bringing Ain Safe down from a higher level to a lower level. <coughs> that in and of himself, the love me calling in me to see you club. Ain Safe by itself is higher than Atsilos. It's higher than the Midas Hachesed, the Midas of Chesed, the measure of Chesed. For the worlds to be created, because the worlds need Chesed in order to be created, then in Ain Safe there isn't such a thing. And therefore, it's rak mi bechinis shame vahara bialma mi ain't say barahu, a small trace, a small little bit of the, the motivation, which is the tainegala key, comes down into chokma to create. Vuhu bechinas shame kill, that's the Abish's name kill. Okay, do it is known. Shain and echa shame shaladam, the name of a person is much less. Al derach much of a way of analogy. The gabayat smusi compared to what the person himself is, the klachashivi. Similarly, by the Abish, the names of the Abish they correspond to the Sphiris. And the names of the Abish correspond to the idea that godliness comes down into the Sphiris. But it's only a Ha'orah. The Etzim is higher than the Sphiris. It says the Rebbe Vachain Shem Melikim Begavur. Line 155 of the Chain. And therefore, to draw down the Lakus from the level which is Tainug alone, higher than Atzils, which is Kulay, Ponim like the Luchas Abris. To calm down into Atzilus. Li Yisraelim Chesed Yibon. The Eibush is to create the world. With me, that's a Chesed, which is an Indian of Tainu Galaki, which is coupled with the Mida of Chesed. Who I day Teiru Mitzvahs. We accomplish it to Teiru Mitzvahs. That I day Mitzvahs do, and we do a Mitzvah. Like a Mokubal. Right? The Lush Narbem Yus HaEiskim BeKabbalah. And the Shem Yichud Kachabirich Hushchinte. You're doing the Mitzvah with a Kavana to bring that Ein Saf into Atzilus. Ayadei mitzvah zu, through this mitzvah, nimshech, shem zeh, b'midah zu v'cholot. It brings down this mitzvah, mitzvah into this mitzvah. This name into this mitzvah. So this ain't safe, this sphiris. And last corner of the shmei means to reveal the ain't safe and the kalim of atzilus. That's all it means. Technically, last corner of the shmei means to expand the kalim. The more kalim you have, the more oil you have. Like if you do exercise, you work your muscles, you develop more muscle mass. So the physical fact is, when you develop more mass of muscle, automatically more life comes down. You don't have to make it happen, it happens by itself. And the same is true in the Nimshul, you do more mitzvahs, the true concept of Laskan Raza Dishmei is not just to bring a little bit of Ein Seif into Atzilus, but Tainu Lahamshech, to bring down, the great name of a Kaddish Baruch, which is Ein Seif, that has come into Atzilus. Okay, as it is known, there's a union even between Avaya and Adnai. 
Adnai is the lowest level, and Havaya is the highest level. And the concept of unifying Havaya and Adnai is to bring Elokus down from a higher level to a lower level. Shuram Shacham Abachin is Shema Havaya, Sev of Kalaman. It's bringing down godliness of Shema Havaya from Sev of Kalaman, Bish Shem Adnai, in the Abish's name Adnai, which is Mamalakalam. Vaidea Teiro Mitzvah through our Yiddish guide. The Teiro Mitzvah we perform, Huam Shacham Abachin is Shema Godel. We are able to bring down from Ein Sev, which is higher than Atsilus. Into what silos can this go? It'll be Meshua Bechufer that Shmei Agodol that Tere is a series of levels which brings Shmei Agodol from a higher level to a lower level. And of course, the key to this is to be a, on a madrege where you can bring down ain't safe, we can experience ain't safe. To say the Shem Yuchad is not hard. I say it every morning. But to be an Eisig Bekabolah that actually brings ain't safe into this world, it's called knowing the Yichudim, this the, the mystical secrets, and being so pure and so. Connected to the Abish and such a Seder Dveikos that you're in a position to bring down Ein Seif. But that's one level of Taita. It's a level of Taita where you bring it down Neyam Avaya, Ein Seif as it is by itself from a higher level to a lower level. The lower level itself is Atsilus and you're bringing it down into Atsilus in a way that you're experiencing the pleasure of Ein Seif in Atsilus. By days end through this, you correct the secret of the Abish's name. All the spheres, all the meters get additional of Ein Seif. And the Rebbe now gives similes for this. This expression, as called Raz Deshmei, can be said in a number of different ways. Three paragraphs, three ideas. Number one, 163 now. But the obvious never got Shema Vaya. Even though we know that they did have Shema Vaya. They didn't get the The true Geli of Shema Vaya is the great name of Akadosh Baruch Hu, is achieved. They didn't have the Tayr. So although the others were very big tzaddikim and very close to Hakadosh Baruch Hu, Shmi Havaya Leini Daiti Lahem, the Madrig of Havaya, which brings Ain Safe down into worlds they did not have. But Meisha Rabbeinu had it right when you got the Tera, uh, we have it. Continues the Rebbe and he says, "Vezehu." This is also the idea of a Kirav Tana Malkein Lashem Chagodol led by Har Sinai. Hashem, the king, brings us close to his great name. In other words, to bring us close to the Yain Seif. To bring down Yain Seif, which is higher than Atzilas, into Atzilas and lower than Atzilas, is Dafka Yedin Hashem Yisrael, through Yid. So the Pshat, last Khan of the Raza is bringing Yain Seif into Atzilas. But in order to learn Teda on a level where you can experience Yain Seif, the Ruach HaKedish of Atzilas, you yourself have to be a Neshama of Atzilas. And if you're a Neshama of Atzilas, you learn Teira, and in your learning Teira, you're understanding the Teira, which is Dachiraim and the Chitzenius. And in your learning Teira and understanding, which is Dachiraim and the Chitzenius, you're being Mamshech in Seif. But that was the cause of a third Raya is Kilayitish of the Shem Asami. Hashem will never forsake his people. Why? Because they're connected to in Seif. Oksiv be Yeshua Matasa, the Shem Chagodol, that Yeshua says to the Abish, what about your great name? We know it says in Zayah that the three knots tied one to another. Yisrael, Mitzka Shroim Be'er Aisa. Yid not connected to the Teir of Aisa, but Kuchu B'Rihu, and Teir is connected to the Yebishter. Yom and Azal, and we add, Dov, and Amel, and Choyim, and Chava, Teir, and Shemayi, Leva, and Kodesh, Baruch, there's a Mayi, and Yidin, even over the Teir. Because the Teir by itself has to be connected to the Yebishter through Dov, and Amel. Then, Elisa, and Kodesh, Baruch, and Yeshev, and Yeshev, and Nishpal, and Teir, Hashem should lower himself into the Teir. Shahu, which really means is Chab, Razvam Shachat, Chinesh Mea Gadol Bechachma, to be done in Seif into Chachma. This is the Pshat, David Hayyim Akash, Deir Shal Maile, and Makadish Baruch. So he brought a number of Rayas. What all of these Rayas are describing is the idea of Teir on a Madreg of Mea Gadol. Now, I don't know if I'm being clear enough. I don't know if I'm capable of being clear enough. But what are we saying? We started a conversation, skipped Mishnah Brayse Gemara, which we'll do next week, and moved straight back to Teirah Shabbat What is Teirah Shabbat Teirah Shabbat is a book. You read it, you understand a little bit of it, you don't see any godliness in it. But Chastidus explains to you that whether you see the godliness in Teirah Shabbat or you don't see the god in Teirah Shabbat in Teirah Shabbat there's incredible godliness. Incredible godliness. And when Yidin learned Teirah on the level of Atzilas, they were bringing that godliness down into Atzilas, which is called La Askana Raza Deshmei, L'Shem Yechach Hachabrich Hachchintei, and so on. Okay? So far so good? I think. Next week we're going to go back, and we're going to read all of these pages that we skipped from around line 71 till around line 149. We're going to be discussing Mishnah, Braisa, 
in Talmud. But let's read a few more lines and you'll get finally a sense of the Maimir. Vezehu pirush ve'elish meis b'nei Yisrael v'gemer. This is the pshat that the Taylor says the names of the Yiddish kind of the Jewish people. Yidin are counted twice. They're counted by number. And on both occasions, when they're counted, they're counted by head. So the Rebbe says, why? By their names. Why? Because the names of the Jewish people represents the name of the Abish. Shmeis B'nai Yisrael means Shemes Mamish. How the B'nai Yisrael are a keli for the names of the Abish. In other words, how B'nai Yisrael are in Atzilus. The Eilish Shmeis B'nai Yisrael, the boy in basically means how B'nai Yisrael are in Madrega of Atzilus. And they're a kli for Shemes. Al-Derech Mashakos of a Yaz, David Shemes. Hasn't the Apostle can explain in Tanya and so on. David made for himself a shame. Who Peter's B'zeir HaKadosh. And the Zeir interprets. The Ovid Shmo Kaddish, he created Hashem's name. In other words, Shehem Shech Vegil Hashem Avayi Lamata, he built Avayi Lamata, Lavata Bapashtas means in Atzilus. That Vayas, David Shem was David, made a keli to reveal the Elokus of Atzilus lower by using the name. Says the Rebbe on line 178, That these few words, Ve'elish Shmeiz B'nei Yisrael, if you'll turn the page and go to 189, you'll see how Boy Mitzrayim is already another story, it's already Golos. But the Taich Ve'ele Shmeis B'nei Yisrael means this is the Madrega of Yidin who are a keli for Shmeis of Shalak Adosh Baruch Hu. Not Ve'ele Shmeis B'nei Yisrael, these are the names of the Jewish people. Ve'ele Shemes, the names of the Ebishter is B'nei Yisrael. Pirush, Kachu Pirush Shemes B'nei Yisrael, what are the names of the Jewish people? Shabnei Yisrael, Mamshichim Ve'esim, the Yidin bring down and they create. Bechines Gilu Shemes Al Yain, the revelation of the names of the Ebishter, which is higher than Atzilus and in Atzilus Lamato. Well, commission is by as we just explained, the Pirish Lat Konar Oza Deshmei. In the last page and a half, U Be Pirish Meshubach and Ferad Achmi Agodl, which was a few pages ago. So, what did we learned today and what did we not learn today? First of all, we talked about a tzina, a channel. And it's a channel of creation which conceals and a channel of Taylor which reveals. Second of all, we explained that the channel has many levels of Taylor. And we explained that on the highest levels, Tate is pure Tainig, and the lowest levels, Tate is pure Seichel, in between it's a combination of Tainig and Seichel. And that combination is the world of Atzilus. And our mind begins in the journey, the Tate coming down into Atzilus. And of course, us making us, ourselves Kalim to go up and receive it in Atzilus. But he describes how the Elokus comes down, the Tate comes down, the Elokus of Tate comes down into the Atzilus. It's Laskon and Oza Deshmei, that the name of the Eibish, that the Ein Saf of the Eibish is being revealed in Atzilus. In Mitzvah Hashem, next week we're going to learn about Mishnah, Brais, and Gemara. Now, if you're a purist, you're upset with me, because I jumped, which is like a really bad thing to do. I jumped from, we did from 42 to 69, and then we jumped all the way to 149. But after I finish next week's class, I'm not promising you're going to like me, but at least you'll understand why I did what I did.